Shoulder injuries can be super painful and really limit your daily function. But when your doctor suggests surgery to fix it, what do you do? Rotator cuff and labrum tears are both major injuries, and it can be a big decision to opt in for a surgery to repair them. But don't worry, there are things you can do to prepare and heal fully from these procedures. If you've ever wondered how these surgeries work or what recovery with physical therapy looks like, stick around. Hi everyone, my name is Chris Brandt and I'm a licensed physical therapist at EW Motion Therapy in Birmingham, Alabama. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about what rotator cuff repair is, what a labrum repair is, and the role of physical therapy in both pre and post surgery for these procedures. Before we compare the two surgeries, let's take a quick look at the shoulder's anatomy. Understanding how this joint works will make it way easier to see why these injuries happen in the first place. The shoulder is a ball and socket joint, meaning the upper arm bone, called the humerus, fits into a shallow socket on the edge of your shoulder blade, called the glenoid cavity. But here's the thing, unlike the hip joint, which is a deep and stable socket, the shoulder is built for mobility. That's why we can throw, lift, and rotate our arms in so many different directions. This also makes the joint more prone to injury. Two key players that keep the shoulder joint functioning properly are the rotator cuff and the labrum. The rotator cuff is a group of four muscles and their tendons that attach around the head of the humerus. These muscles keep the head of the humerus stable while allowing us to lift, rotate, and move our arms smoothly. When one of these tendons tears, it can lead to pain, weakness, and limited movement, making even the simplest tasks like reaching overhead feel impossible. Then we have the labrum, which is a ring of cartilage that lines the glenoid cavity. Think of it as a cushion that really deepens the socket and keeps the ball of the shoulder in place. If the labrum tears, it can cause pain, sometimes clicking sounds, and even a sense of instability, like your shoulder might slip out of place. So now that we understand what these structures do, let's break down each type of surgery. Let's start with the rotator cuff repair. If you've ever thrown a ball too hard, lifted something too heavy, or even just reached for something on a high shelf and felt a sharp pain, your rotator cuff might be the culprit. This group of four muscles and their tendons play a huge role in shoulder movement and stability. And when they tear, that's where surgery comes in. Rotator cuff repair is typically about fixing torn tendons. There are three main ways surgeons go about this. First, there's the open repair. This involves a large incision where the surgeon moves muscles aside to access the damaged tendon directly. It's the most traditional approach and is sometimes necessary for larger and more complicated tears. Then we have the arthroscopic repair. Instead of a big cut, the surgeon makes small incisions and inserts a tiny camera to guide the procedure. This method is less invasive and usually means a quicker recovery. And finally, there's the mini open repair, which is a combination of the first two techniques. This method combines arthroscopic techniques with a smaller incision than the traditional open repair. Regardless of the method, the goal is always to repair the torn tendon. Surgeons use sutures and sometimes small anchors to secure everything in place so the tendon can heal properly. Now let's talk recovery. Healing from a rotator cuff repair isn't exactly a weakened project. It takes time. It may take up to four to six months for a full recovery, depending on the severity of the tear and the type of repair. Depending on your surgeon and the type of repair, you may be using a sling for the first four to six weeks. This is done really to limit the amount of active movement as much as possible. There are some surgeons and techniques where there's no sling used after surgery. To really find out, you will need to talk to your surgeon to understand their protocol for rehabilitation. Whether you are in a sling or not, this phase is very important for allowing the healing process to take place at the surgical site. Most of the rehab during this time is passive movement or movement by your therapist and postural exercise. After that, the focus of your therapy will move gradually, starting with gentle active movement and progressing to strengthening exercises. All right, now that we've covered rotator cuff repair, let's talk about labral repair. So what exactly is the labrum? Imagine a soft circular cushion that lines the socket of your shoulder joint. This ring of cartilage helps deepen the socket and keeps your shoulder joint stable, kind of like how a rubber gasket helps seal a jar lid. But when the labrum tears, it can cause pain, instability, and even limited movement. 
Label repair is usually done arthroscopically, which as I mentioned before means small incisions, a tiny camera, and precision tools to get the job done. Suture anchors hold the labrum in place while it heals. Shoulder labral repairs vary based on the location and the type of tear. You may have heard of something called slap repairs. Slap stands for superior labrum, anterior to posterior. These surgeries address superior labrum tears or the tears in the area where the biceps tendon attaches to the shoulder. Surgeons repair the tendon using suture anchors or in some cases, biceps tenodesis, also known as biceps tendon reattachment. Bank cart repairs fix anterior or front labral tears caused by dislocations by reattaching the labrum to restore stability. Posterior labral repairs or reverse bank cart repairs treat tears at the back of the labrum often seen in athletes with repetitive shoulder strain or overhead lifting. Combined labral repairs are needed for extensive labral tears affecting multiple regions requiring multiple anchors and sometimes even tightening of the shoulder joint capsule. Since labral repair is less invasive than traditional open surgery, it usually means a smoother recovery with less postoperative pain. But just like rotator cuff repairs, it's not an overnight fix. So what does the healing process for a labrum repair really look like? Brace yourself, because for a full recovery, it may take four to six months. That's right, both procedures will have a pretty extensive recovery, but not everyone will take the same amount of time. For many people, recovery time is largely based on age, extent of pre-surgical injury, mobility before surgery, surgical history, and many other personal factors like help at home. Typically for the first few weeks, movement is pretty restricted. Your labrum needs time to properly heal. So you'll likely be in a sling and avoiding certain arm motions. But don't worry, you won't be stuck there forever. There's one game changing factor that can make your recovery the best that it can be. And that's physical therapy. Whether it's before or after surgery, physical therapy can be an important ingredient to getting your shoulder back in action as quickly as possible. Let's start with pre-surgical physical therapy, or some call it prehab. Think of this as the warm up before the big game. Before surgery, your shoulder is possibly dealing with weakness, pain, and instability. So strengthening the surrounding muscles and improving posture ahead of time can provide a lot of extra support. This can mean a better surgical outcome and often a quicker recovery. But prehab isn't just about muscle strength. It's also about mobility. The more range of motion you can maintain without irritation before surgery, the easier it will be to regain movement afterwards. Imagine trying to get back into a workout routine after months of doing nothing. It's so much harder, right? The same idea applies here. Another huge bonus of physical therapy pre-surgery is familiarity. Patients who do prehab already know many of the exercises they'll be doing post-surgery, which makes the transition into recovery less overwhelming. Plus, there's a mental aspect to this. Prehab prepares you for what's ahead, so you go into surgery feeling confident rather than clueless. At the end of the day, prehab is all about setting yourself up for success, and who doesn't want that? If you're curious about what prehab can do for you, please discuss with your surgeon all of your options to see if physical therapy before surgery could be the right plan for you. Now, once surgery is over, the real work begins. You've gone through the procedure, your shoulder is repaired, but now you've got to train it back to full strength. That's where post-surgical physical therapy comes in. Rehab after surgery is all about healing first, then gradual range of motion, and finally strength. Right after surgery, your shoulder is weak, your muscles can be tight, and movement can be very limited. Through a carefully structured rehabilitation plan, Physical therapists gradually introduce exercises that help you regain motion without straining the repair. Physical therapy also helps with pain management. Surgery can cause swelling and discomfort, but therapists can use a mix of gentle exercises, ice, heat, and even massage techniques to really keep your pain under control. It's not just about moving better, it's about feeling better too. Another big reason rehab is crucial is for reducing scar tissue and stiffness. If you don't move your shoulder properly or have your shoulder move for you, scar tissue can build up in ways that restrict mobility. The last thing you want after months of recovery is to feel like your shoulder is stuck. That's why consistent, guided movement is key to ensuring everything heals correctly. And let's not forget one of the most important parts of post-surgical physical therapy, injury prevention. 
Physical therapy isn't just about getting back to normal. It's about making sure you don't end up back in surgery. Physical therapists will teach you safe movement patterns, strength building techniques, and how to avoid re-injury so you can get back to doing what you love without fear of setbacks. So whether it's rotator cuff repair or labrum repair, shoulder surgery is a journey. But the good news is with the right treatment and rehab, most people fully recover and get back to their normal activities. If you are watching this video, I'm guessing that you probably are about to be going through one of these surgeries. But maybe you are just struggling with shoulder pain and are doing some research into the various treatments that are out there. If this sounds more like you, check out our video linked below called Why Does My Shoulder Hurt Reaching Up? This video reviews all of the different causes for shoulder pain and their various treatment options. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to help you on your physical therapy and wellness journey.